let's touch base um, just very briefly on you know what is very very close to your heart. Yes, music education, but you've got. Um, there's a pan in the school, pan in the classroom. Pan in the classroom. So we, we, we like to stress that. Pan in the classroom. Yes, and I, 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 I will um, elaborate on why we stress pan in the classroom. Okay. Because, especially in Trinidad and Tobago, a number of folks think about pan as an extracurricular activity. Mm -hmm. So, principal will call and say, We want to get some pans for school because we want to start a steel band. Mm -hmm. And we're about teaching music during the regular school day as in a the music subject. class, yes. Mm -hmm. And especially at the elementary level where even though it is supposed to be a subject that has been taught and me, you, you go to a school and you look at their timetable, you see music written on the timetable, mm -hmm. very <laughs> often very what has been happening at the elementary level is that the students will sing a few songs yeah. and we have music. Mm -hmm. So then we end up good. having <laughs> persons who are not musically illiterate. Um, as a music educator, I am passionate about music education because all of the research that is done tells you that the earlier a child begins to learn to read and write music, and the better they perform. Matter of anything, languages, and, anything. Well, yeah. Well, the three main areas that children really need exposure to within the first six years of life: music. Well, the arts, but music in particular, physical education and sports, and languages. Those three have been shown to be the best areas in terms of developing the brain, making the connections around the neurons and synapses, and so on, growing connections in the brain. Um, one of the things that um, they found out, well, Within recent times, with the improvement in technology, there's something that's called functional magnetic resonance imaging, fMRI. And with fMRI, you can examine different areas of the brain whilst someone is actually doing something. Mm -hmm. So you can see what area of the brain lights up when different... Where the activity is stimulated. Right. And um, one of the buzzwords in education for years has been a whole brain learning. Right? Not right brain, not left brain. And music and the arts have always been considered right brain activities. What they've been able to show is that persons who are musically literate utilize both areas of the brain when they're processing music. So that someone who is not musically literate will listen to a piece of music and it will show up as a right brain activity. Someone who has been trained in music, when they are listening to the same piece of music, both the halves of the brain, yeah, makes sense. Um, the area of the brain that connects both halves is called the corpus callosum. The scientists have shown that the corpus callosum in, in musicians is thicker than in non-musicians, and they theorize that it's because of the all of the interhemispheric traffic that's going on. Now when you look at areas of the brain, we spoke about language, areas of the brain that deal with language in musicians, musicians process lang uh, music also in the areas of the brain that deal with language. So the same area is also thicker in those, yeah. Okay. The more connections are grown, the greater the connections, the better the processing of information. They've shown, for example, this is something that we all know as a matter of course, that you put something to music, it's easier retained. We think of the little infants learning the ABCs and, you know, mm -hmm. tables and all of these sorts of things. But the research continues to demonstrate that reading, science, mm -hmm. mathematics, mm -hmm. languages, right. child exposed to music education in the first few years of life performs better than someone who is not. And we're talking overall performance. Which overall. Is very good. So right. this is why we stress that in the classroom. classroom. Because the objective is to teach music and ensure that music is taught. But we use the pan as the principal the instrument. instrument. Not as the only instrument, Just but the as the principal. principal instrument. Right, understood. And we have in Trinidad and Tobago, over the last um, school year, we've placed uh, instruments in 60 elementary schools. Mm -hmm. Which is a drop in the bucket, but we're getting there. It's and it's the first time in Trinidad and Tobago that we have music specifically timetabled with a music instructor going to the school. Mm -hmm. 
So we are making some strides. Um, we trust within the next three to five years that we will be able to cover all the schools that are so interested. Yes, we, our, our mandate from the government is to supply all schools. Mm -hmm. But because of the multicultural dimension of Trinidad to be go multi religious, because there are some religious groups that don't particularly want music in their schools. Not just that, but there are some schools that, some religions that don't look at music as an educative activity. Mm -hmm. So they don't want music taught in their schools. Mm -hmm. So that's a challenge for the folks in higher positions than we to address. Mm -hmm. But I'm trying as much as possible to fulfill the mandates that we've been given.